Linus Torvalds finally steps into the C versus Rust Linux divide. Conversations have been taking place on the Linux kernel mailing list and have been drawing a lot of confusion lately, even putting into question Rust's role in the Linux kernel and if it even has a place to be in there. As a few maintainers have stepped down due to the overall drama, we now finally see Linus step in and make an official statement about the drama and the Rust versus C Linux divide. As a lot of people have been asking the Linux leadership to step in and step up to address the issue, we finally get a response from the founder himself. So let's get into what Linus's reply is here. You'll definitely want to stick around for this one as it is blunt and unfiltered. First off, Linus here is responding to Kristoff, who is kind of the instigator of the recent drama, and originally said that they wanted nothing to do with the Rust code in their portion of the Linux kernel. They were working on the DMA, known as the Direct Memory Access in Linux, and the drama originally centered around a debate over trying to introduce Rust code into the DMA, and Kristoff was very vocal about opposing Rust integration. He argued that adding Rust, or any other language at that, increased complexity and made it harder to maintain the code base. And according to him, maintainers shouldn't be forced to support or even consider code written in any other language that they don't use. Well, a lot of Rust maintainers argued that stance, but we were really getting nowhere. And here is what Linus replied to, again from Kristoff here, the document claims no subsystem is forced to take Rust. That's proven to be wrong by Linus. And while you might not have known that when writing the document, you absolutely did when posting it to the list. Continuing on with that internal debate with maintainers, and here's Linus's response. I was hopeful, and I've tried to just see if this long thread results in anything constructive, but this seems to be going backwards or at least not forwards. A strong start. The fact is, the pull request you objected to did not touch the DMA layer at all. It was literally just another user of it. In a completely separate subdirectory that didn't change the code you maintain in any way, shape, or form. I find it distressing that you are complaining about new users of your code, and then you keep bringing up these kinds of complete garbage arguments. Honestly, what you have been doing is basically saying, as a DMA maintainer, I control what DMA code is used for, and that is not how any of this works. A strong start by Linus here, really not liking any of the conversation that had been taking place between maintainers, and especially from Kristoff, as he immediately refutes the idea that the new Rust code affects the DMA layer that the maintainers oversee, and that was a core argument that Kristoff was making. What's next? Saying that your particular drivers can't do DMA because you don't like that device. And as a DMA maintainer, you control who can use the DMA code. That's literally exactly what you are trying to do with the Rust code. You are saying that you disagree with Rust, which is fine. Nobody has ever required you to write or read Rust code. But then you take that stance to mean that the Rust code cannot even use or interface to code you maintain. So let me be very clear. If you as a maintainer feel that you control who or what can use your code, you are wrong. And Linus lays down a clear rule here. If you're the maintainer of a subsystem, you can choose whether you get involved in writing different types of code, but if you opt out, it seems like you relinquish any control over how your code is used by any other type of code, including Rust. I respect you technically, and I like working with you. And no, I am not looking for yes men. And I like it when you call me out on my bullshit. I say some stupid things at times. There needs to be people who just stand up to me and tell me I'm full of shit. But now I'm calling you out on yours. So this email is not about some rust policy. This email is about a much bigger issue as a maintainer. You are in charge of your code. Sure. But you're not in charge of who uses the end result and how. You don't have to like Rust. You don't have to care about it. That's been made clear pretty much from the very beginning that nobody is forced to suddenly have to learn a new language and that people who want to work purely on the seaside can very much continue to do so. And now we're getting into some of the core arguments here. But before we do, make sure to smash that like button so more people can see this video. Also take a moment to subscribe below 
as YouTube can get finicky and you wouldn't want to miss another video on Linux and programming. So to get back to the very core of your statement, the document claims no subsystem is forced to take Rust. That is very much true. You are not forced to take any Rust code or care about any Rust code in the DMA code. You can ignore it. But ignore on the Rust side automatically also means that you do not have any say on the Rust side. You can't say, I want to have nothing to do with Rust. And then in the very next sentence say, and that means that the Rust code that I will ignore cannot use C interfaces I maintain. Maintainers who want to be involved in the Rust side can be involved in it. And by being involved with it, they will have some say in what the Rust bindings look like. They basically become the maintainers of the Rust interfaces too. But maintainers who are taking the I don't want to deal with Rust option also then basically will obviously not have to bother with the Rust bindings. But as a result, they also won't have any say on what goes on the Rust side. So when you change the C interfaces, the Rust people will have to deal with the fallout and will have to fix the Rust bindings. That's kind of the promise here. There's that wall of protection around C developers that don't want to deal with the Rust issues and promise that they don't have to deal with Rust. But that wall of protection basically goes both ways. If you don't want to deal with the Rust code, you get no say on the Rust code. Put it another way, the nobody is forced to deal with Rust does not imply everyone is allowed to veto any Rust code. And I think this is a very important statement here that Linus has made as it sets a clear boundary in the Linux kernel development process. Linus seems to be emphasizing that a maintainer's personal dislike for Rust cannot be used in order to veto how their C code is used. In other words, if you don't wanna engage with Rust, you also forfeit your ability to block its use as it interfaces with your code, which directly flies in the face of what this maintainer was trying to get by. See, and no, I don't actually think it needs to be at all that black and white. I've stated the above in very black and white terms, becoming a maintainer of the Rust bindings too versus don't want to deal with Rust at all. But in many cases, I suspect it will be a much less harsh of a line where a subsystem maintainer may be aware of the Rust bindings and willing to work with the Rust side, but perhaps not hugely actively involved. So it really doesn't have to be an all or nothing situation, signed off Linus. And while what a statement from Linus that we get, who is now clarifying his stance and the choices that active maintainers have when developing and maintaining Rust bindings for their subsystems. In short, maintainers cannot block Rust code from using their C code simply because they dislike another language, including Rust. Why is this important to Linux? Well, it is a bit of encouragement. This statement fosters a bit of an open environment for incorporating new technologies, including Rust programming into the kernel. It also clarifies things a little bit. Defining clear boundaries, maintainers who want to contribute to Rust can do so, while those who don't want its influence in the design of its subsystems cannot simply block the language from being used. It also promotes some collaboration, as it helps to make sure that Rust does not get further stalled by disagreements on the C side of things, at least where harsh lines have been drawn, like in this case. But as Linus mentions at the end, a lot of this is going to be more of a gray area than this situation proved out to be. Hopefully this future proofs the kernel and embraces Rust in a more controlled and transparent manner now that we have these directives from Linus, the founder of Linux. I think this is crucial for Linus to step up as a leader and help balance the integration of modern programming into the Linux kernel, paving the way for a more versatile and maintainable system in which we can all work together in this has definitely been a wild ride. I don't think this is going to be the end of the situation, but I do want to hear what you think about the C versus Rust Linux divide in the comments section below. Do you think this was a good enough stance by Linus? Did it come a little bit too late? Do we understand what Linus was waiting around for? Love to hear from you. And if you made it to the end of the video, thank you. You're a true fan. 
make sure to subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video. Also, don't forget to like the video, catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.